Hello friends, welcome back to my channel MBB Mohit Sharma. In today's video, I am going to talk about descriptive statistics. So I will talk about what is data, what are different types of data, what are the shapes that data can take, and you should also know what is the central tendency of the data and how you measure the variation or spread of the data. So let's get started with the video. Data is facts and statistics collected together for reference or analysis. There are two types of data, continuous and discrete. Continuous data is measured on a continuous scale, can be measured to infinity and to any decimal precision. Tenure of employee measured in years of service completed is continuous data. Data of weight, length, height, speed and time is also continuous data. Discrete data is of three types, binary. Binary data has two outputs, in, out, pass, fail, yes, no. Second discrete data type is ordinal. Ordinal data is of rank, rating or a definite scale. Employee satisfaction survey score on a scale of 1 to 5 is discrete type of ordinal data. Third discrete data type is count. Count is discrete count which is number of people in the room, number of computers, number of calls. So the difference between continuous and discrete data is you cannot break discrete data into decimals. For example, if a survey score rating is from 1 to 5 and you want to rate 4.5, you cannot rate it as 4.5. You can either rate it as 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. And similarly, in case of count data, you cannot say that I have taken 4.5 calls today. Either you have taken 4 calls or 5 calls. The difference between discrete and continuous data is that you cannot write discrete data with decimals. Next you need to understand is three types of data distribution. So first one is normal distribution. The example of that would be time, weight, height of people. Skewed distribution. The example of that would be distribution of wealth and uniform distribution. And the example of that would be high precision process. I would take another example to make you understand this better. There is a training class which will start at 9 o'clock in the morning. So some of the people will start falling in at 8.30. As the time will come close to 9 o'clock, more and more people start coming in. So you will have a peak at 9 o'clock. There would be people who would come in late as well after 9. So there will be a slant and data will follow normal distribution curve. Now let us put a bias in this data. Suppose the gate of the classroom is open at 9 o'clock in the morning. All the people who are waiting outside the classroom will enter in one go and hence there would be a peak towards the beginning. People would come late as well and hence they will create the tail. This type of data distribution is also known as skewed or non-normal distribution. There is another type of distribution which is uniform distribution. And in the same example, if everybody has come in the bus and got a drop at 9 o'clock in front of the class and entered the class at the same time. So it means it's high precision data. Means everybody has entered at 9 o'clock. So the data would be uniform in that case. The next thing that we will study about data is the central tendency, which is measured by mean and median. There is another way we can measure it, which is mode. That will not be in the scope of this video. Mean. Mean is popularly known as average and is representative of the center point of a sample. The correct measure of central tendency when the data is continuous and normal. Let us take an example. Suppose you have 5 data points, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 and you want to calculate the average of this. The formula is sum of these numbers divided by the count of these numbers. So sum of these numbers is 70 and when you divide 70 by 5, you will get 14. So 14 is the mean of the data set. Next is median. Median is the 50th percentile of a given data sample. The correct measure of central tendency when the data is continuous, normal or non-normal. Let us take an example. In the same data set 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, the central point is 14, so the median is 14. In the data set, you need to arrange your data into ascending or descending order. In this data set, we have arranged the data into ascending order and 14 is the central point. When your data is odd, it is easy to find out the central value data is even like this 12 13 14 15 16 17 you need to arrange your data into ascending order and then calculate the average of these two points which is 14 and 15 
and that would become your median. So in second data set 14.5 is the median. Now another important point is when should we use mean and when should we use median. Let us take an example. Suppose an organization has decided to deduct standard tax of 15% from all managers salary and they are considering the average as a measure of central tendency. So we have salary of 7 managers and if we calculate the mean it would be dollar 1 lakh and 15% tax on that would be dollar 15000. Let us consider that there is a salary of a senior manager which gets added into this salary and that salary is 5 lakh dollars. Now the average will come out to be 1,57,143 and 15% of that would be 23,571 which is way higher than $15,000. If we use mean as a central tendency value then managers have to pay extra tax. Now let us calculate median and see what happens. Now we have to arrange our data into ascending or descending order. I have arranged my data into ascending order. And the median identified is 1 lakh. So a standard tax of $15,000 would be deducted from the salary and that would be correct as well. If your data is normally distributed, you should use mean. And if your data is non-normally distributed, you should use median. Or you can say if your data has outliers, you should use median. When we talk about data, we always talk about the central tendencies. So people forget about variation. Why should you measure variation? Let's take an example to understand this better. Suppose your pickup time in the morning is 7.30 am and your cab driver comes at 7 am for 15 days and 8 am for 15 days. You are not at all happy with that. So you have gone to the transport department and complained about the driver. Cab driver comes with his logbook and shows that the average of the data is 7.30 only. But you are not happy with the cab driver. There is another cab which comes at the same route. The timing of the cab is 7.25 and 7.35. The average of his data is also 7.30 but variation is very less which is 10 minutes. And I am very much sure that as a customer you would love to board cab number 2 rather than cab number 1. Though the mean of both the cabs are same but variation is different. So hence we should measure variation. As customer feels variation which gets unnoticed. Measures of variation. Standard deviation and interquartile range. Variation can be defined as the difference in the values of the data points in a given data set or the deviation of any given data point from the center of the process. Standard deviation. Standard deviation is also referred to as the spread of a process. Formula to calculate standard deviation is x minus x bar whole square sum of that divided by n. It becomes n minus 1 when we are working with samples. Let us take an example. So I have to calculate standard deviation for data points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The first step is to calculate x minus x bar and x bar is basically mean. So mean is 3 in this case. So 1 minus 3, 2 minus 3, 3 minus 3, 4 minus 3, 5 minus 3. And the next step is to calculate x minus x bar whole square which is 4, 1, 0, 1, 4 and sum of them is 10. So the next step is to divide 10 by n minus 1 which is 10 divided by 4 which is 2.5 and under root of 2.5 is 1.5881139 which is the standard deviation of the data set. Next thing is interquartile range. It is the difference between 75th and 25th percentile. Suppose you have a data set which has 1 to 13 data points. You have to arrange your data into ascending or descending order to calculate median. So I have already arranged my data into ascending order and 7 is the median. Now consider the data point above median and calculate median for that particular data set which is 4 which is Q1. Calculate median for data set below median and that is 10 which becomes Q3. So your interquartile range is the difference of Q3 minus Q1 which is 10 minus 4 and that is 6. So your interquartile range for this data set is 6. When the data is normally distributed, we use standard deviation. And when the data is non-normally distributed, we use interquartile range. I hope this video has clarified all your doubts about basic statistics. This video would be useful for beginners in Six Sigma, those who are doing yellow belt, and then it would be useful for green belts as well as black belts also. I hope this video has clarified all your doubts on this topic. In case you need to ask anything, you can write in the comment box below. I would be happy to answer your queries. 
As you already know about my book, Eight Steps to Problem Solving, it is now also available internationally on Amazon.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you soon in my next video. In this video, you will find a short clip about my recently authored book, Eight Steps to Problem Solving. Now my book is also available at Crossword Stores, Gurugram.